the sun rises over a tranquil wetland. On a nearby overpass, a man with a backward baseball cap and beard drives a black sports car. His arms are tattooed and he has large black ear tunnels in his earlobes. He grips the steering wheel with a sleek black modern prosthetic hand that connects to his arm below the elbow. Every day I wake up and I kind of think to myself, how did I get here? On a stage, he plays a drum kit. Next, he strolls along a boardwalk that extends over a wetland toward a lookout tower. But you put your mind to something and you don't let anything stop you. In an empty warehouse, he twirls his drumsticks in his left hand, then plays the drums. Next, in an empty warehouse parking lot, he drifts his car in circles. It's impossible to not make progress. On a sports field, Jason plays drums on a riser. He is surrounded by members of a drum corps marching band who wear matching mustard-colored hoodies. The group performs a synchronized routine. They all wear black COVID-19 face masks. Other clips show Jason practicing on his drums at home, then on stage. Now he gazes through steely eyes. In the forest, he sets up a hammock between two trees and lounges. Caption, Maggie Peer, Jason's mother. When Jason was in diapers, I knew he was gonna be an unusual child. He'd be in his high chair at the dinner table, and if there was any music on, he would be beating on the table. Tap, 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 tap. In the forest, Jason records the sounds through a microphone hooked to a smartphone. He listens through headphones. He has a nose ring and a small jeweled dermal anchor under his left eye. We realized this kid needs some drums because he's always beating up everything and he had a band, and then life changed. January 9th, 2012, I'll never forget. As clouds drift through a fading pink sky, a strong breeze whips at an American flag. I used to do subcontract work cleaning restaurant exhaust. We'd usually do like two to three jobs a day, go up on the roof and spray down the duct. Just like I remember a pink flash and then like a loud boom. In his bedroom, Jason lies on his bed. And then I woke up in the hospital. When I knew that we were gonna have to amputate his arm, he cried in my arms. He said, Mom, I'm never gonna amount to anything. I'll never play drums. I'll never be able to do anything again in my life, ever. Ornate letters tattooed across his fingers spell the word life. After three weeks into him being home, he said, I can't take this anymore. He said, get my drum kit out of the garage. And so we duct taped a drumstick to his arm. He did some little tapping around and then he turned around and said, you know, I think I can make something work. In a prosthetics workshop, a man measures the short distance from Jason's elbow to his residual limb. Seem like it's growing back, Doc. <laughs> With a smile, the man shakes his head. Later at a work table, the man sands a mold. At another table, a colleague works on a mold for a prosthetic leg. In an adjoining room, Jason plays a small keyboard synthesizer connected to a laptop. There's a side of me ever since I've been a kid where if I'm going to start something, it has to get done. On a city street corner, the uptown theater marquee flashes. Inside... Jason enters the corridor. I just won't let it go. On stage, Jason gazes across the empty theater. Now backstage, he dons a prosthetic drumming arm. At the tip, a small spring-loaded grip holds a drumstick. So my current prosthetic is what you call a body-powered prosthetic. It just uses basic mechanics, so there's no robotic controls or no electronics. At a sound check, he plays alongside a fellow drummer. I use a lot of my shoulder and elbow to kind of exaggerate to get the hits that I want. It's pretty exhausting. It also has limitations on how fast I can play. Subtitle, band leader. That feels like it might be a little too slow. At first it was a little slow. Yeah, it's a weird one. I, uh... So I had an idea of developing a robotic drumming prosthetic and Gil Weinberg develops musical robots. And so I knew Gil was kind of the right person to reach out to. Caption, Gil Weinberg, PhD professor and director, Georgia Tech Center for Music Technology. I understood immediately what he wanted. He wanted to sense more of his muscles and be able to control the bounce of the drumstick. In Gil's lab, his team briefs Jason, a small machine that mimics a drum stroke, holds a drumstick over a snare drum. Now Jason wears a sheath around his residual limb that is connected to a series of wires. Basically, we just wanted to be able to get me back on the kit and play as humanly natural as possible. 
The model is trying to learn you, but you probably will have to learn how to work with the yeah, model. Yeah, I think well, most of it now is like the sensitivity. But I'm not training it that hard. Also, there's a trade-off because if you increase the sensitivity, then it's going to have a lot of false positives and false negatives. Would you like to move stiff, loose? How, how fast are we going to change between the kind of hits? I, mean, I have tons of ideas, but then it's just like how accurate is everything going to be? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. okay. nice. I was a little worried. Can we provide him with what he wanted in terms of the latency and the control? We, oh, we, we didn't know that it's possible. OK, I'm really excited to see if we have signals. In a garage, Gil paces while PhD student Ning Yang attaches a mechanical device to Jason's prosthetic sheath. Ready, Ning? The goal is very simple, but in reality, in each of the steps, it's actually pretty complicated. Oh, see, and that's what happened yeah. last time. We have some crashes, and the stick starts to roll around. Maybe we should have Raga listening also to get an insight. PhD student Raga appears on a laptop video call, subtitle Raga. So what you might have to do is just take data when you're moving. Like we were doing in the lab. Yeah, exactly. That might solve this issue. It could be also the power supply itself. Right. Caption, Nat Jeffries, software engineer, Google. There are actually a handful of challenges with creating a prosthetic arm specifically for drumming. Latency is always a big concern. You don't want to flex your arm at a second later for it to do something. With Nat on the laptop screen, Jason taps rhythms on the tabletop. Subtitle Nat. If it's delayed by 50 milliseconds, you can notice that. Yeah. Jason lets the stick bounce on a snare drum. Next, from above, Ning sketches mathematical diagrams and graphs. And there's a lot of nuance with exactly how the drumstick reacts. Things as subtle as how tightly do you grip it, how does it bounce, they're really hard to calibrate if you don't have a machine learning system to gather all the data. As Jason plays the drum, the strokes appear as wavelengths on a computer monitor. Caption, Sarah Sarajadeen, Engineering Director, Google. When I heard about Jason's story, it really blew my mind. I was like, whoa, I had no idea how far we have come in terms of AI and prosthetics. So the way the arm operates is we use EMG, which stands for electromyography. Basically what that is, is it's sensors that are amplified by a battery that pick up electrical signals from our residual limb. An animated graphic depicts the arm sheath as a series of concentric circles. Dots along the circles indicate the sensor inputs. Using these signals, we are able to do recognition of complex patterns with machine learning and then map them to specific movements. TensorFlow Lite is doing that in real time. And so I can flex my muscle and it will tighten the grip on the stick and I can extend my muscle and it will loosen the grip on the stick just like it would with a normal hand. No, the latency is it's like none. Awesome, that's awesome. And in the last few months, we were able to detect almost 100% of the time this intention. I can actually feel the feedback from the arm and it feels as close to a real hand as you can get without it actually being a real hand. In a music studio control room, an engineer works at a computer before a large mixing console. In the studio space, Jason plays the drums while Ning monitors his movements on a laptop. I think what Jason and the team has accomplished is truly awe-inspiring. He took what was a large setback in his life and he moved an entire field of research forward. So loose, you can actually... Jason demonstrates his new arms capabilities to fellow drummer, Billy Brimelcombe. <laughs> Let me see what it might even be. Yeah, I mean, there are, there are drummers with, with two sound hands that don't have double strokes that even. <laughs> like that. It's amazing. For the first time, if you look at him playing, you may not even notice this technology. We just see Jason as a great and expressive musician that he is. In the theater, against a black backdrop, Jason performs. His right arm prosthetic is a black sheath attached to a steel mechanism that holds the drumstick in a firm yet nimble grip. Of course, I think there's a need to keep pushing on this stuff because there's always someone that needs help with something like this, and, and AI is going to be the bridge between that. Jason sits at his drum kit, nodding his head. Caption, to those helping to make everyone's dreams more accessible, search on Google. Wide angle of Jason playing his drums. 